Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. They put the whole school on lockdown. They put the whole school on lockdown. Then after that, I just put, I had to do, I did my job, put the desk right in front of the door like you're supposed to and hide. Rockford, Dixon, and Freeport, schools in the state line and across the state fall victim to swatting calls. An arrest is made after a man is shot outside a downtown Rockford restaurant. Investigators look into a motive. And Rockford Rescue Mission receives a generous donation. The money will go towards helping the state line's homeless population. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Tom Lewis. Eric is off tonight. Today, schools around the state are forced to stop classes and lessons because of threats. We just learned 21 schools had swatting calls reporting active shooters or hurt students, only for law enforcement to find nothing. In the state line, three schools received the fake calls this morning. Dixon and Freeport High Schools and East High School in Rockford. Dispatch got a call just after 8 this morning saying there was an active shooter inside East High School and someone was shot inside the Rockford Public High School. Dozens of squad cars from multiple agencies, including Rockford Police, rushed to the school on Charles Street. We're told the first squad was there in just three minutes. The school went on to lockdown and officers searched each floor of that school. I can tell you that there was no one injured within the school building. We have no shooting victims whatsoever. It's my understanding that there have been numerous rumors that are floating around in regards to what's transpired, but this is your official report. Chief Red says they will continue to investigate the call while the district superintendent says he understands even a threat can be traumatic and there will be resources available at East for anyone who needs them. We are absolutely saddened by the fact that Academic learning was disrupted, that families and students and staff felt a real sense of concern this morning, and we are just thrilled that all of our students and staff are safe uh, and that we had such an amazing response from law enforcement. Our Nikel Delgado was on the scene this morning and talked to students who were inside at the time. She's live outside of East High School now. Nikel, what did you find out? Yeah, Mimi and Tom. Parents and families were packed all on the sidewalks trying to figure out what was actually going on inside the school. Even though it was a false alarm, they tell me it still was very scary. When everything happened, we were just getting ready to take our test, but we didn't know what was going on and it had just happened. Everything happened so fast. I started shaking. I was already anxious for the test because it's a PSAT and so. We were getting out early, which was also relieving, but then this happens and it's just more anxiety on top of anxiety, so it's just a lot to take in. Students at East High School were preparing to take the PSAT Wednesday morning when the school went on lockdown. Some tell me while they practice for things like this, they never thought it would happen to them. This is a hard lockdown, this is not a drill, and everybody was like panicking. It was really crazy. We went to the... Uh, Went to like the back of the classroom, made sure we didn't go near windows because that's what the teachers told us. So Many teens texted friends and family. Lawrence and Serena Bentley tell me they had just dropped off their son at school. He was just texting us to let us know that he's okay, but he's petrified at this moment. And I, that's where my heart breaks, is that this, he's going to remember this moment for the rest of his life. And I didn't want that for him. Parent and founder of Community Life Center of Rockford, Bethany Simmons, was one of the people that many students messaged. Bethany says as soon as she heard, she sent a mass text to her students to follow all directions from staff. All I cared about is that all of these students were doing what they were supposed to do so that the, the law enforcement could do their job. And I'm so proud of the kids and the staff for being able to, you know, keep calm and letting them do their jobs. The Bentleys are thankful for the quick response from law enforcement. It's, it's heart, it's heart wrenching because, you know, you saw Uvalde and then you saw how they didn't respond. And then I see this and how they responded. And I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful. It was very traumatic. It was very crazy. My feelings are like all over the place. I'm relieved that everybody is OK. Nobody got hurt. East High School students were dismissed for the day around 10 a.m. Class will resume tomorrow. Reporting live in Rockford for your home team, I'm Nikel Delgado. It's really emotional. All right, thanks, Nikel. Like we said, this was a bigger trend. Around 825, someone called Freeport Police to report an active shooter on the school floor of that high school. 
The call came from an out-of-state area code. Police responded and searched the school, but determined it was a fake call and there was no threat. And it was a similar situation in Dixon. 911 got the call around 8.30, so the last of the three local schools. The caller said a student was shot at the high school, but when the dispatcher asked questions about the school and the caller couldn't answer, police saying it was very clear to them this caller was attempting a swatting situation. In total, 21 schools in 19 counties throughout the state were disrupted by threats. But in each case, there was no evidence of an active or recent shooting. All the police departments said they take these kinds of calls very seriously and warn any kind of copycat can face serious consequences. In fact, a special agent in charge with the FBI in Illinois says someone can be sentenced up to five years in federal prison if charged with a hoax threat. A man is charged with a daylight shooting in downtown Rockford. Last Thursday, police say 26-year-old Michael Blue shot a man in the face. The 32-year-old went inside of the Jimmy John's on State Street to get help. Police say he was shot in the parking lot just east of that restaurant. Blue was in custody yesterday in Roscoe. Police say he had a large amount of cocaine on him. Blue was charged with several felonies, including attempted murder. Two people are seriously hurt after a chase and crash in Ogle County. Late last night, deputies attempted to stop a vehicle on South 7th Street in Rochelle, but the driver took off. Officers later spotted it leaving the Love's travel stop and once again tried to stop it. Deputies say the driver missed the curve at South Stewart and East Ritchie Roads, hit an embankment and ended up in a ditch. 24-year-old Jonathan Brown of Monroe Center was airlifted to OSF St. Anthony's with major injuries. His female passenger was also airlifted to Rockford in critical condition. Charges against Brown are pending. A man is hurt after a crash in Ogle County. Deputies were called to the intersection of Eagle Point Road and Freeport Road yesterday around 5. They say a teenager didn't stop at a stop sign and struck a pickup truck hauling an empty anhydrous ammonia tank. That driver, 65-year-old Randall Dornink, lost control, went into the ditch, hit a fence. The polo man was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The teen was cited for disobeying a stop sign. The Boone County Adult Drug Court program celebrates its 12th graduation ceremony. Three drug court participants graduated from the program. The event took place at the Boone County Courthouse. Adult Drug Court program helps non-violent offenders with substance abuse addiction. Benefits to the individuals recovering some from substance abuse includes improved relationship with family members, increased self-esteem, better health, and increased likelihood for employment. The goal of the program is to use what they have learned to positively change the course of their life. Seeing somebody from the start when they're really at rock bottom, when they're doing some things that they're not at all proud of, and you think there's no way this person is going to be able to get through a program like this, and then seeing them, you know, proud of every step that they take along the way. They're proud of the fact that they've got 10 days of clean time. They're proud when they have 30 days of clean time. And then, you know, we've got these guys today who the lowest number was in the 500s, so. It's a great accomplishment for them. For more information on the Adult Drug Court program, check out this story at MyStateLine.com. The Rockford Rescue Mission receives a big donation. It's thanks to the Share the Love event from Napleton Subaru. The Share the Love event donates $250 from every new Subaru vehicle sold or leased from November through January. Today, Rockford Rescue Mission received a check for $23,000. The mission says this generous donation is greatly needed. This is a really wonderful way for community, the Rockford community, uh, a business to be engaged and just be a part of giving back to the community. Rockford Rescue Mission provides meals and safe shelter for thousands of hungry and homeless men, women and children every year. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, the red flag warning remains in effect until 7 o'clock here this evening for all of northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. In fact, this expands across much of the Midwest, all the way out through the plains and just east of the Rockies as those dry conditions continue and also out to the east across parts of the northeast here this evening. This means with the wind and that low relative humidity value, you want to make sure you limit, avoid any outdoor burning. Tomorrow, while it might not be quite as windy, there is still that potential.
potential for that relative humidity value to drop below 35 to even 30 percent. So again, tomorrow may be another day to kind of limit some of that outdoor burning. We see a little more moisture come in once we get into the weekend. Sustained winds have been from the west and southwest, really anywhere from 15 up to 25, close to 30 miles per hour. But we've had gusts this afternoon, 35 to 40. So it's been very windy out there. And the combination of that wind, plenty of sunshine, allowing our temperatures to climb into the low 80s, our first 80 degree reading here so far this season. Wind speeds tomorrow afternoon will drop uh, down just a bit. We'll see that wind stay from the southwest at about 15 to 20 miles per hour tonight. It'll pick back up through the afternoon tomorrow with just a little mixing taking place with the sunshine. Gusts still at around 25 to 30 miles per hour on Thursday. And again, temperatures tomorrow will be warming back into the low 80s. We'll actually be just a couple of degrees away from a record high temperature, very similar to where we've been here this afternoon. When we look at these relative humidity numbers, you know it's dry out there when you start to see 20, 25 percent. These numbers again may come up a little bit for tomorrow, but still anticipating those drier conditions. You can actually see how that relative humidity value fell throughout the day, typically as highest in the morning and late at night as the temperature and dew point temperature are close to each other. But when those two numbers get further apart, that's when we start to see that relative humidity value go down. And with the wind being a big factor for today and the drier vegetation, again, that's been the issue with the limiting the outdoor burning. So tomorrow, again, you want to watch that. Friday, we've got a little more moisture coming in, so not as much of an issue with those red flag warnings. 80 degrees are temperature in Freeport, 81 in Rockford 82 right now in Rochelle. Same thing up in Janesville. Our weather watcher Terry in Genoa 81 degrees. We've had a southwesterly wind sustained at 22 miles per hour, but gusts have come close to 40 down there in northern DeKalb County. 81, that's our high temperature so far right now. Record high 84. Tomorrow going with a forecast high of 81. Record high temperature 83. Set back in 2006. So close to that record. Lots of sunshine out there for us this afternoon. We maintain that clear sky here as we go through the rest of this evening. We'll see a little more cloud cover work in during the afternoon tomorrow. That's just as that low pressure system that's been blocked down to the south starts to break free and work through the Ohio River Valley. This will increase some of the cloud cover for our Friday, but I still think Friday temperatures are back into the mid and upper 70s. We do have to watch this cold front coming in on Saturday. I think there is a chance for some thunderstorms and with that front slowing down just a little bit coming through late Saturday night. The potential is there for some strong, maybe severe thunderstorms with some strong winds. So something we'll keep an eye on here as we go towards Saturday afternoon. But a big drop in our temperatures once that front comes through. Low to mid 70s on Saturday. We're down to 47 then on Sunday and we've got some rain showers too to go along with it. Temperatures next week not nearly as warm, but we'll slowly see those numbers trend back closer to the low 60s. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. The White Sox haven't had the best start to the 2023 season, especially on the road. Today was the finisher of their series in Minneapolis. Not a lot of offensive action happening in this one to begin with, but Lucas Giolito got off to a good start. Ryan Jeffers goes out swinging in the second. Then it's Trevor Larnick who looks at a called third strike. Giolito had five strikeouts in two innings. Now to the eighth, Willie Castro lines one into the gap, and that'll bring in two more Minnesota runs across home plate. Lennon Sosa homered in the ninth, but it was too late. White Sox dropped this one 3-1. to one. Next up is a six-game home stretch that starts with the Orioles. Not a great day for Chicago baseball. The Cubs dropped their series finale with Seattle 5-2, to two, and the Brewers finishing things up in Arizona. They trail by four right now in the ninth. Even with today's loss, Cubs fans have a reason to smile. They'll be able to watch Ian Happ for three more years to come. The Cubs have signed the outfielder to a three-year, $61 million deal that begins next season. The recent moves, including the signing of Nico Horner, is showing signs that the Northsiders are trying to build this current core into a contending team. The Bulls aren't quite into the NBA playoffs yet, but they have a chance to claw their way into the first round with two wins in the play-in tournament this week. The first leg of this trip starts tonight as they visit Fred Van Vliet and the Toronto Raptors. The winner will advance to a Friday game in Miami against the Heat. Friday's winner will get the eight seed. During the regular season, the Bulls went one for two against the Raptors, dropping both games on the road. Toronto has successfully shut down Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. To ease the pressure on those two, they are going to need other guys to step up. Two of the best perimeter defense defenders in our league right there. 
and you know the the accountability that they hold everybody um, up to, um, how vocal those guys are, you know it becomes contagious, you know, and it pushes, you know, me, Zach, and Vooch um, to compete, you know, and that's what you've been seeing the second half of the season, um, and it's going to be critical, especially tonight, you know, um, bringing that d defensive intensity. Um, so it's been great just having those two guys out there with the mindset they have defensively, and we just got to follow behind it. Game one tips off here soon at 6 p.m. That's sports. We'll be right back. Tonight on News Nation, as the Bud Light boycott continues, Leland examines how the company's political correctness appears to be backfiring. Tonight on On Balance. Then on Cuomo. Bill O'Reilly joins Chris in a must-see, can't-miss debate on the day's hottest topics. That's tonight on Cuomo. See why more people are turning to News Nation. To find News Nation, go to newsnationnow.com and select Channel Finder. News Nation, news for all America. Today to see temperatures at 80 degrees, unbelievable. Nice. It's just then we look at your seven day. Well, don't look <laughs> at that. Here, right? Don't look at that. Just don't look beyond yeah. tomorrow. Okay, sounds <laughs> like a plan. Or Friday. I mean, Friday's still going to be a nice day, so we Good. close out the work week with nice conditions. Saturday, we've got some showers and thunderstorms that we'll need to kind of keep an eye on. There is the potential for some of those to turn strong to severe. Not a widespread event, but uh, still something to keep an eye on with that cold front coming through. Our interactive radar, well, that's been pretty quiet these last few days, and it's going to stay pretty quiet the next couple of days. Temperatures tonight down to 52, back up to 81 tomorrow, mid upper 70s on Friday. A little more cloud cover, though, these next couple of days. 73 on Saturday, and then it's like a big drop on Sunday, 47, 50s next week. Thanks, Candace. Have a great night, everybody.